Hi guys, it is a spectacularly gorgeous day here in the end times in paradise. At East Bumblefuck, New Mexico, here on this beautiful springtime Thursday morning, February 16, 2017. So I just figured I finished kind of part one of my new weekly feature dump, dump the Trump beehive. But I'm going to uh, bring to you today, I'm going to go back to my, my old Thursday, uh, which I guess is a whine about uh, my depressed collapsitarian whine, because uh, I have found the absolute perfect segue between my dump the Trump de hive rant and my Humpty Dumpty tribe whine here on Alternet, uh, spelling it out. First, so I go over here on Alternet.org. So first I have to get past the stories, time is already running out on our democracy. Then I gotta get past Paul Krugman dissects the staggering ignorance of the Trump White House. Then I have to get past the White House has got to stop embarrassing themselves. Then I have to get past the White House mess exposes Donald Trump's long con. Uh, then I need to get past the story Trump flailing. Yes. Uh, then I need to get past the story, five disturbing new revelations about Trump's dysfunctional National Security Council. Then I need to get past the story why Stephen Miller comes off as such a dick. Uh, then I need to get past why Robert Reich lays waste to Trump's rudderless White House the sloppiest management I have ever seen. Uh, then I need to get past a neuroscientist explains why Donald Trump needs LSD. Uh, and finally, I arrive at the story which spells it all out for depressed collapsitarians in the age of Trump, hallelujah, I know how you feel, beat up, battened down, fetal and furious. Okay, and this is from, who is this written by, this spot on article, this is Marty Kaplan, Marty Kaplan, who is the Norman Lear professor from a, whatever a Norman Lear professor means, uh, from USC Annenberg School for Communication and Journalism. So this is Marty's spin on what is going on, what is going on uh, with the skyrocketing rates of depression in, in the United States of America and the opening bell of 2017. I'm going to put the link to this, to this article on here, but uh, if you just want to sit around and listen to a depressed, collapsitarian Trump hater, read it for you, I will. Okay, take it away. Marty. I, I I already read the headline. Okay. The subheadline, of course you're depressed. You know that the news is toxic to your spirit and you admit you're addicted to it. Remember when we couldn't wait to say good riddance to 2016? We'd had it with that abusive spouse of an election year. We were sick of the emotional roller coaster. We needed an armistice, a breather. We were desperate to rise from the political sewer to the shining city on the hill. Fat chance. This 2017 thing is even worse. 
I know how you feel. Beat up, batten down, fetal, furious. But just remember, there is nothing wrong with you. It's not you, it's him. Of course you're depressed. You know that the news is toxic to your spirit, and it, you admit you're addicted to it. But really, with all of these non-stop horribles, who wouldn't be obsessed by political disaster porn? Even though the news leaves you feeling not informed and empowered, but helpless and fearful, even if your neocortex knows that Trump's game is to hijack your attention and the media's game is to monetize it, still your reptilian brain will not permit you to peel your eyes from the screen, won't let you stop refreshing your feed. It keeps you texting and posting and tweeting and screaming, can't you fucking believe this? Your news addiction feels no less compulsive than, but is the reciprocal of an opioid addiction. You are hooked on pain, and I see my battery is about to die. If my battery dies, I'm not going to start this rant over. It makes sense to be incensed. You're enraged by the cowardice of Republican legislators who have put protecting their own political skins above, the, above protecting the Constitution. You are livid that Trump's poo-pooing of political correctness has, in fact, exempted racist, homophobes, misogynists, and anti-Semites, and other haters from being shunned and shamed. You are infuriated by the toadies, fools, vipers, and schmata hucksters, whatever schmata means, schmata hucksters now wearing staff passes to the West Wing. You're angry there is no accountability for Trump's blatant conflicts of interest, no punishment for stonewalling his tax returns, no penalty for his bullying, his laziness, his lying, and his ignorance. No wonder you're ambivalent. You have empathy for voters who struggle to make ends meet and whose loathing of corruption helped put this guy in office. But you find yourself rooting that the real harm he will do to them, robbing their health care, wrecking their public schools, risking their retirement, rolling back their rights, will awaken them to the colossal con they have enabled and will eventually rouse them to resistance. It's perfectly normal that you're freaked out by how fragile American democracy is now, how vulnerable the enlightenment machinery our founders designed turns out to be. It's unsettling that the power of a free press to check political power has itself been checked by the conquest of journalism by entertainment, the displacement of reason by ratings, the substitution of internet anarchy and networked nihilism for the norms of civil discourse. It's chilling to concede that the separation of powers between executive and legislative branches can be so completely sabotaged by one party rule. And then he goes off on some spin uh, cheering on Hillary Clinton. Yeah, 
Like, uh, guys, but I do point out, I used to say that Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are the difference between the frying pan and the fire. No, the difference between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump is the difference between a bad sunburn and a nuclear radiation peeling the skin off your face is what the difference between uh, those two is. Anyway... The grit is truly exhausting. I can't go on. I'll go on, Samuel Beckett said. But it is awful draining to be whipsawed between despair and determination. One day you're uplifted by millions of marching women. The next... Another state outlaws abortion. You're heartened to see so many town halls where the invisible movement, already more potent than the Tea Party, is holding congressional feet to the fire, but you're powerless to prevent the single most unfit cabinet in our history from being confirmed. When a senator says a Supreme Court nominee told him he was demoralized by Donald Trump's attack on the judiciary, you let yourself be hopeful. But when cable yackers call that a ploy to create an aura of independence for judges, you feel spun like a chump. The storm still gathering over Team Trump's footsie with Putin invites us to imagine a sudden end to the 45th presidency. If evidence turns up that Trump swapped softer sanctions on Russia for Putin feeding his Clinton email hacks to WikiLeaks, maybe Paul Ryan would let the House vote to impeach him. Or maybe Trump's megalomania will be so undeniably sociopathic even to his own administration that the 25th Amendment will be a vote to replace him. Maybe Trump's misery in his own job will culminate in a resignation. Or maybe Saturday Night Live, CNN, and the dishonest New York Times will finally make his head explode. Then again, maybe it's just the same old yo-yo of hope and dread. You go up, okay, I go up, at the prospect that our national nightmare will be over sooner rather than later. Then I go down at the thought of President Pimps. <laughs> Guys, uh, you know, uh, anybody at this point, I will take President Pence at this point because the choice between Hillary Clinton and Mike Pence really is the choice between the frying pan and the fire and not a choice between a sunburn and a nuclear radiation scar or face peeling. Anyway, I'm losing my battery. I did want to, uh, to touch upon uh, a couple of these uh, other stories about depression uh, showing up here in, in the Trump uh, era. Here's one. Uh, if you live your life without mental health issues, science says you're the weird one. Yes. Uh, if you happen to make it even half your lifetime without experiencing some type of temporary or chronic mental ailment, you're actually pretty damn weird, mainly talking about anxiety and depression. Uh, this latest study 
in the Journal of Abnormal Psychology, this, in a study of 988 individuals, only 17% of them claimed to, to have never experienced depression, anxiety, or other mental health disorder. I would like to hear where that figure goes over the next year. Uh, in two stories, uh, this one from the Huffington Post, psychologists think they have found the purpose of depression. Uh, this is a long involved story from Huff Post. Unfortunately, I, I can't get into, uh, in, into the purpose of depression because I'm losing my battery. And then the good old New York Post the unexpected upside to depression. Uh, this is a first-person account by this woman named Crystal Ponty. Uh, and uh, she says, uh, <clears throat> turns out for someone with depression, letting go is often easy and completely normal. In fact, it can be a psychological win. Uh, a pioneering new study from researchers in Germany suggests that letting go of unattainable goals may be an adaptive risk, an adaptive perk of depression. Uh, quoting this study, and this is probably the same one in, in HuffPost, I believe, quoting and I'm going to close with this, and my battery will hang with me, quote, Depression is adaptive because it sensitizes a person to detect possible limits of personal agency and influence and thus helps them to realize and accept that successful pursuit of a goal or a task or an incentive might not be feasible. This somewhat pessimistic attitude is adaptive whenever important personal goals are blocked, preventing scarce resources being spent in vain attempts. So uh, we will find out whether dumping Donald Trump is a vain attempt or not, and for some ungodly reason, your, uh, your depressed collapsitarian actually seeing some rays of hopium that we're going to get rid of this fucker. The number one cause of the latest epidemic of mass anxiety and depression sweeping this country, but I gotta wrap up this depressed collapsitarian whine because your old depressed collapsitarian has to get out there and do his laundry talking about depressing. Anyway, I'll be back tomorrow with my ecological meltdown roundup rants volume one and two. Bye guys. Okay, you depressed little dog. Let's get out of here.